Hey everyone, today I'm going to show a demo on my latest generator, CurveGen. CurveGen was designed to be a one-stop shop for any kind of curve modeling. I wanted to take all the hassle and headache out of using the standard array and curve deform modifiers. No more worrying about matching pivots, translations, rotations, or scales. I packed everything a modeler could possibly need into a single node. With that said, let's get into the first example. First thing to do is append our node tree. So we'll enter into the blend file provided and we'll append curve gen. Great. Now we want to apply a geometry nodes modifier to the primary object that I want to deform. So we'll attach curve gen to that, select the curve. And right away it looks a bit funky. And the reason for that is because it's deforming along the X axis, but we want to deform along the Z axis down the length. So let's just change that from one to three. So X, Y, and Z, one, two, and three. And there you go. You've got yourself a rope, which is being arrayed as many times as necessary to fill the length of that curve. Um, now, what we can do is we can turn off array and then that will simply take the existing object, the original object, and instead of arraying it, it will stretch the entire thing along the curve. What we can also do is turn off fit curve length. So now we can just have an individual object which is not being stretched along the curve. So a few different options here. For this particular example, I'm going to turn leave array on and I'm also going to leave fit curve length on as well. Now another setting that I just glossed over is the cur curve smooth level. Now what this is doing is it's basically taking our original curve and it's smoothing it out a little bit. I personally like to work with poly curves, it's just more reliable and easier to interpret instead of bezier, but you can use either one. It, but it's the same thing as just subdividing that curve so it's a bit smoother. Next step, let's add our end meshes. So we can select an end mesh here, and we can select another end mesh here. Next thing is to dial in the scale. So we can scale in the viewport itself just by pressing S, and it will scale, and it will once again continue to array as many times as necessary to fill the length of that curve. Or we can dial in the scale in the modifier itself. So let's perhaps set this to 0 0.5. Another setting I want to go over is stretch array mesh. So what this is doing is it's basically just stretching the whole thing. You can crush it down. Um, and this is something that you're going to do a lot during our curve deformations. So we'll set that back to 1. Another setting which isn't entirely relevant to this rope here is the array spacing. This basically just adds a space in between the array. We'll leave that to zero for now. And let's see here. Turn the stretch right back to where it should be here. What we can also do is we can offset the end mesh. So you can see there's a bit of a gap here, which is something that you may want to do. So it's nice to have that control. Next step, well, next setting is the twist curve. So you can twist the entire curve how you want. We also have incremental rotations. Now, this setting isn't applicable to this um, model here, but for things like chains, it comes in very useful. But I'll show you what it does. It's basically just going to twist incrementally down the length of the curve. Another setting is to scale along the curve. So we can scale up and down. The only caveat to this setting is that when it gets to the end of the curve, it's going to kind of crush them at the end. It can't go past the end of the curve. So uh, it's good that you model your curve as long as you need it to be. Otherwise, the setting can break your mesh. But within the bounds of the curve, it works great. We can also move it along the length of the curve. 
and we can offset along the normal of the curve. In this next example, we're going to go over the other mode that curve to form has, and it's to remove the deformation of the instances. So I'll apply a curve gen modifier to this chain link here. Select the curve. We'll just enable that quickly. Set that to the correct axis, the Z axis going upwards. And right away, you can see that we're getting some weird deformations here, which is not very desirable. So what we can do is turn off deform and it will switch it into a instance on points mode. Next thing we can do is firstly, just perhaps scale this down a little bit and we can change the array spacing so we can reduce that, something like that. And we can then incrementally twist the chain. So maybe we can use something like 80 degrees. And you've got a perfectly good chain ready to go. We'll just increase the spacing a bit more so it's a bit tighter. Uh, we have some other controls as well, which is great for instancing on points. And we have things like random rotations, so we can add a bit of random rotation to everything. And we can also add some random scale as well, just to add a bit more interest to our object. Same thing for this little DNA thing here. I'll just attach a curve gen modifier. And we'll change that to tick off deform, incrementally twist it. And right away, you can get some really interesting results here. In this example, we're going to go over some bead creation. So let's add a geometry nodes modifier curve gen, attach it to the curve. And what we can do is turn off deform, change that to the Z axis. And the reason why we're turning off deform is because beads don't crush down like that. They don't taper around curves. So we need to turn off deform and maybe we could increase the array spa spacing a little bit, something, something like that. We'll attach an end mesh here. And I think something like that looks pretty good. The next thing we're gonna do is add a center tube. So I've added this control here, um, especially for things like necklaces and beads and that sort of thing. So we can increase the pipe radius a little bit here and perhaps increase the segments a bit. So now we have a nice string running through the center of this object. And here's where you can see where the, the end mesh offset can come in handy. You can push and pull the, um, the end mesh. And there you go, really quickly, you've got some beads going on. But before we do Go to the next example. Let's just add a bit of randomization. Slight randomization here. And a bit of random rotations as well. There you go. Perfect. In this next example, I want to show how we can layer multiple uh, curve gen modifiers together. So I can attach a curve gen modifier to this object select the curve we'll just enable that quickly and we'll just set it to the z-axis and i'm happy to leave that at deform because it's a bit, it's a tube so i'm okay with it tapering the way that it is and the next thing we want to do is create another curve gen modifier on this object so we'll add a geometry nodes modifier curve gen attach that to the curve change it to the z-axis turn off deform and let's change the array spacing something like that and we'll set our end mesh and now you can see that when I move this everything is just moving 
all together. I don't need to worry about any of the technical difficulties of pivots or anything like that, like you normally would with the vanilla tools that Blender provides. Um, another thing we can do is we have a little tick box here to exclude endpoints. So if you're doing instancing on points, so you've turned off the deform mode, I can turn that off just to get rid of anything that's being instanced on that point, because I don't want to have that double up. I don't want to have two of these next to each other. So I can exclude those endpoints, and then I can just sync this end mesh back into place, and we've got a really nice tube. So that's how you can kind of layer a lot of these together to create a lot of complexity. In this next example, I'm going to go over random step rotations. So let's, as always, just attach a geometry nodes modifier, select our curve, and we'll just leave it at this for now. And let's just look at the axis of what we want to rotate around. So we want to rotate around the Y axis. So around this axis here. So if we enable it and we change our step rotations from X, which is one to Y, which is two. And if we increase this value from zero to one, our panels are gonna be randomly rotated by 90 degrees. If we set it to two, they're gonna be randomly rotated in 180 degrees. And this is useful for when you're creating a lot of sci-fi panels and you want to array them along a curve, but you don't want to see the repetition. See, if I if I turn this off, you can just see that it's just the same detail over and over again. And the, the human eye will pick up on that very easily, which is why I've included this setting here. So now you can see there's a bit of breakup, which is really, really nice to have. In this next example, I'm going to cover using a target mesh. So we'll create our geometry nodes modifier, select the curve, and we'll turn off deform in this case, because these are bolts. And let's do it along the x-axis. We'll twist it by 180 degrees, and we'll also change the array spacing. Right, now we're going to set a target mesh. Now you can do a few things with a target mesh. You can offset it based on the normal, and you can, most importantly, align your instances to the target mesh. So it's a bit hard to see here, but if we just look at this particular bolt here, when I tick it on, so you can see the directionality, when I tick it on, they align with each other. Now I've just haphazardly drawn this curve for demonstration purposes. You probably want to draw it a lot more closer to the surface, but if you want to ensure that it, your curve is snapping to the surface, what you can do is shrink wrap to target mesh, and then that will snap the curve to the target mesh, and you can just continue drawing out bolts how you want. Now what we might need to do is actually, because you can see one bolt is sinking into the surface here, we may need to smooth out the curve, give it a few more points, and you're good to go. And you can just dynamically change the scale of your bolts. And it's that easy. In this next example, I'm going to go over the process of making a disco ball using Curve Gen. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and made this curve structure for us. If you're curious about how I made the curve structure, all I did was I got a curve set, a cross section of a UV sphere. I then resampled that so we could get evenly spaced points. We'll set that back to 64 for now. I then screwed it. And if I take all of my edge rings, inverted it, delete the edges, you've got this really nice disco ball curve structure. 
So let's get back to our example here. Let's add curve gen to our mirror. And the great thing is curve gen works on multiple curves, not just one curve. Let's turn off deform. So we get our individual mirrors here. Let's set our target mesh. And let's align our mirrors to the target mesh. Next, let's twist the curve by 90 degrees. Let's scale this down a little bit. So there's just a slight gap between the mirrors. Let's increase the array spacing so they're not crashing on each other. And then there you go, you've got yourself a perfectly made disco ball. It just goes to show the, the versatility of what you can do with uh, Curve Gen. Lastly, before the demo comes to an end, I wanted to just highlight the fact that we have all of these controls over the scale and rotations of our Curve Deform and instances, but we still have control over the curve itself. So no matter what, even if you're aligning to an object or twisting or whatever, we can still use the standard curve tilt at any moment. We can also use the standard uh, Alt S scale and we can scale each individual curve points on top of all of the controls we have. And that pretty much summarizes curve gen quite nicely, I think. If you've got any questions or issues, please feel free to get in contact with me and uh, I'm more than happy to help you out. All right, guys. See you later.